Good evening. I would like to call a little order the September 24, 2018 Belbrook City Council meeting to order. Would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mr. Edwards? Here. Mr. Greenwood? Here. Mr. McGill's absent. Mrs. Middlestetter? Here. Mrs. Sigur Lawson? Here. Deputy Mayor Schweller? Here. Mayor Baird? Here. May I have a motion to excuse Mr. McGill? So moved. May I have a second? Second. second. And roll call. Motion by Mrs. Middlestetter to excuse Mr. McGill. Seconded by Mr. Edwards. Mrs. Middlestetter? Yes. Mr. Edwards? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mrs. Sigur Lawson? Yes. Mr. Schweller? Yes. Mayor Baird? Yes. Formal approval of minutes of our regular meeting minutes of September 10th, 2018. Does any member on council have any corrections or additions to the regular city council meeting minutes of our last meeting? I have none, Mayor. None, Mayor. Seeing none, the minutes are approved as written. Uh, we had one thing on the mayor's announcements this, this evening. Uh, Amber Smith from Neck regarding Dayton foster care, but I don't believe she is here. So we will move on. We have no public hearings of ordinances, no introductions. We have a res. We have. Sorry, Amber is coming up. Okay. Um, so we will. Um, she will be up then as soon as she gets up here. And we're, and we're live on TV. Can we do a resolution? Um, we'll, we'll go ahead and start with resolution 2018 DD. And that's Mr. Greenwood. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> resolution number 2018 DD. A resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into an amended service agreement with IBI Group for Engineering Services on the Upper Hillside Water Main Improvement Project. Whereas IBA group, IBI Group has been retained for the engineering services related to the completion <coughs> of the <coughs> excuse me, Upper Hillside Water Main Improvement Project in the amount of $60,000. And whereas additional work still needs to be completed by IBI Group prior to the finalization of the project. And whereas IBI Group has provided a change order amending the original agreement, increasing said agreement to not to, to, not, to a not to exceed amount of $67,000. And now therefore the city of Bellbrook hereby resolves. Section one, that the city manager is hereby authorized to approve the change order increasing the agreement with the IBI group for the services to an amount not to exceed $67,000 for the project. Section two, if this resolution shall take effect and be enforced forthwith. Um, I think we just went through this a short time ago. Didn't we? Um, we did, this is a second change order. The first one, um, just, to, just to remind everyone, the original amount of the contract, which was um, something that was settled on prior to my arrival, was uh, $43,000 total. And in a meeting, um, I'm not sure, I did not jot down the exact date, um, but it was in August, uh, there was a change order, first change order, to increase the cost of the project from 43000 to 60000 So that was a $17,000 increase. And this is for an additional 7000 And um, I've asked Mike Murray, who is the engineer with IBI Group on the project, to come to discuss that with council since he knows the project and the engineering better than I. So. Sure. Come right on up. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, Mike Murray with the IBI Group. Um, several meetings ago in mid-August, um, we met to uh, amend the contract for the contractor as well as for the inspection services. At the time, the reason, one of the reasons we amended the contractor's contract was he had expand, we expanded his work with um, aerial fiber optic, putting them on the poles with the DPNL poles. Um, at the time, we realized that we were um, approaching the, we had approached and exceeded the contract amount for the con construction management and observation services that we were providing. Um, one of the reasons that we uh, had the last change order that we thought we were covered was that the contractor had indicated that the paving company, his subcontractor, was going to be coming in immediately following the meeting 
uh, like the following two, like 10 days later. Um, and we were going to do the restoration, the final cleanup, and the paving at the same time. So we would be um, observing and, and inspecting the work of the two tasks at the same time. In reality, due to some delays on the subcontractor's timeline, that got pushed out almost three weeks and the paving occurred in the middle of September, which stretched our timeline in terms of the inspection, or inspection and observation work. Um, the work is complete up there. Everything is done with the exception of there's a meter that needs to be installed by DPNL to provide power to the PRV pit. Um, DPNL is scheduling, has that work scheduled. I do not have a final date on that, but we've been told it's, it's forthcoming. Um, and that is the final item that needs to be completed with this project uh, to wrap up all the work that's happened up there. Um, a little background on, on the project. The construction estimate when we applied for OPWC funding was $1.06 million. We typically use a 10% factor for the construction administration and, and observation work, which would have been 106000 give or take. However, there was a significant proportion of the work that uh, Bellbrook City staff was performing because it involved the inside meters in dealing with the residents and that scheduling. So going looking at our historical data when we signed the original contract, subtracting off what we thought was going to be the Bellbrook effort to do that, we arrived at our original, our original number. We typically don't spend anywhere near the 10% on the other OPWC projects we've done in the city in the last 10 to 12 years. This project was by far the biggest and most complicated project that we've done since IBI has been around. Um, and the, con the contractor schedule to, to wrap up was a little bit more aggressive than it turned out to in actuality of what he was able to accomplish in the timeline that he was at, thereby stretching out his time on the project and stretching out our time on the project. So um, like I said, all the work is complete. The final thing we're doing now is wrapping up paperwork, the final estimates, uh, getting the bonds and the maintenance bond put together um, for the next 11 months and then doing or what will be our final pay application here early October um, and that's that's the status of the, where the project stands today restoration is complete paving is complete all of the work that the residents see is done with the exception of the uh, meter that DPNL needs to install So when we amended this the first time in August, what was the increase, Melissa? Do you remember exactly? 17000 And then we added some cushion on top of that, if I recall. Just for Brackney. There wasn't okay. any cushion built into the engineering. So the $7,000 additional that were before us tonight is for what? The final uh, construction observation and the paperwork to close out the contract, as well as some the last bit of inspection to complete it. When we uh, extended the Brackney contract, we put a, a a buffer in there because we hadn't done the milling and resurfacing yet and we had run into some things uh, during construction where there were some manholes that were covered uh, paved over that we didn't know existed that we had to bring to grade we anticipated that because of the age of the plat and and not knowing where all those things were we might run into some of those things uh, we ran into one more manhole I believe that we didn't know ex existed and we raised that to grade um, the only other change on that buffer was um, we extended the aerial fiber at the request of IT advisors, the city's uh, technology Tech subconsultant, to instead of terminating the fiber on Main Street at the power pole, we brought it down several more poles and down to the service building. But that was part of the 20. That was part of the 20. So the, the 7,000 is just your final inspection and. And the project closeout, yes. And, the and that's because it was delayed three weeks. That's um, yeah, it's just that the, the restoration took longer than we anticipated. We thought they were going to be running. We were told they would be running two crews and doing restoration in multiple spots at the same time. Logistically, that didn't work for them getting in and out. So they, they added more days with the restoration. And then, and then the paving did not con occur concurrently with that, which was, in retrospect, probably a good thing when we had trouble running, trying to run the two crews during restoration. It just drug out our timeline. So you were out there during that time, that three week period. Correct. Yes. So I'm, I'm just trying to figure out no, where, yeah, your, where your time and, and, and expense came in because it wasn't yeah. any physical actual work done, but your time to go out there because it was extended to observe paving and whatever else they were doing. Okay. Yes. So basically, what'd you do when you had the delay? Nothing. I mean. Well, there wasn't the the delay was not was that they didn't occur concurrently. We had two two they separate tasks. The there. prime contractor was going to do the restoration, the seeding, the topsoil placement, and the cleanup, um, some minor concrete work, those types of things. 
and that was going to happen originally according to the contractor schedule concurrently with the paving when the paving got delayed they still went ahead and did the restoration and the, the, the other items just they we didn't have two different subcontractors working together like we've been told they ended up separating them into two different tasks occurring at two different times in the project schedule so the contractor's a fault for I don't know if the your, contractor's your, at fault, but um, I mean that's caused you to have to it to make multiple trips out. Yes, <laughs> um, it's just the timing of what he anticipated doing, and what he told what we were told was going to happen didn't end up working out for us. We could have delayed the restoration and done it all at one time. Um, we made the decision with with the cooler weather that we had at the time and the fact that we, <coughs> we were heading into the fall. We wanted to get the seed in, get the rain that we're getting. Um, <laughs> So we got good restoration with the intent that the residents would have um, all of their yards restored and we do very little reseeding in the spring. Um, and if you look up there now, there's, there's probably some spots, little spots, but overall the seed is taken, the restoration looks good. Um, you really can't tell that there's been a lot of work done up there um, in their yards and in the yards and the driveways and things like that. So I, I think the contractor was probably a little aggressive in trying to get the project wrapped up um, because we originally were trying very hard to have, have as much done as possible before school started or even early in the school year to not impede buses. Um, he has some ability to push his subcontractor um, to get here as quickly as he could and he did but it didn't work out in the time frame that he had originally allotted um, when he set the schedule. There's a lot of rain. I'm sorry? I think there was a lot of rain that pushed all those Yeah, the, the, the earlier rain didn't really hurt us, but it pushed out the, the paving the contractor. Paving, yeah. So he was behind. Mm -hmm. um, we made the decision not to hold off on the restoration. Mm -hmm. um, at the last meeting, we'd had um, some concerns from the residents about f filling some holes, getting the grass to grow, trying to get it set up for the fall. Um, even when we started the restoration, we thought, well, we were gonna, they were going to end up overlapping. They just didn't. They didn't. Um, and it ended up dragging out longer than we anticipated. Uh, I think everybody went into it with trying to be as um, optimistic and aggressive as we could to get in and out. Uh, contractor made his best effort. It's just the timing of it didn't align the way we really wanted to. Um, it's kind of like any home improvement project. Things go a little longer than you ever thought they would. So um, unfortunately, this was a large home improvement project for us. So. Is, is our service department qualified to do any of that type of inspections? or? Um, they did the, the, the water line connections um, <coughs> mostly because they were controlling the valves and shutting things off and turning them back on and working with the residents. Some of the work had to occur in the house. Um, could they have done some of the restoration? Maybe, but it's a 10-hour it's, it's a day, five-day-a-week project. Contractor starts early and, and stays late, um, and it would have required um, a pretty significant commitment in terms of manpower and resources for the city. If this says not to exceed sixty-seven thousand. You tell me the project is done, so it's going to be at sixty-seven thousand. What be a, the fee is going to be exactly? Yes, correct. I'm just surprised we started forty-three and now we've increased it by more than fifty percent. It just seems like we started way, way low on this thing, and I we, we understand the bit. problems you talked about a little bit, but it just sounds like it's kind of a hefty increase. I was thinking, at the sixty thousand dollar number, we were pretty much close to being done. But what about the Brackney contract? Are we going to eat into that excess as well, or? We shouldn't by much. Not by much. The the extension of the the fiber. The Brad had the the cushion of what twenty thousand or something. Twenty two thousand. Yeah, twenty four five. I think yeah. was what it was. Yeah, yes. we're going to be able to sort of return some of that back mm -hmm. in. Yes. And trade so off with you guys. I'm sorry. And trade it with you guys. Uh, <laughs> not dollar for dollar. No. Um, Brackney does have the extension of the fiber to the to the service build or to the, the service building, which was something that came up at with IT, IT tech advisors right, and, um, right. recommendation to provide better service overall and get it to a central location, um, which was not feasible when we set up the initial well, I get all that stuff. I'm just yeah. surprised okay. how it's kind of all, it is what it is at this point in time, to be honest. And I think the fiber optic thing was probably the better solution than what we had before, <coughs> so I know we had to pay extra for that. I was just surprised this thing keeps kind of going. I hope now, and I'm glad to hear we're finally finished. I, yeah, and once you get into this thing, you can't stop, you know, and so we got to just kind of shoot through and get through it all. Correct. But like I said, I, I think in retrospect, we were a little aggressive and optimistic in, in how we were going to line things up with the subcontractor um, to do the paving. Um, I think 
we were ne you know we were next on the list kind of the way it works um, and they were a little longer somewhere else which pushed yeah. them a little longer here um, it just didn't no, I appreciate it. it was still a good project. The way we really wanted it to they turned out good I think we had great support from the citizens I'm not aware of a whole lot of complaints so I appreciate what you guys did I'm just sorry it took longer and cost more but I guess at this point in time it is what it is but as long as, long as we're finished at 67 then Correct. That's, that's better than thinking we're not finished Donna, do you have anything? Um, what what I always do find interesting, though, and you know, so the last one said not to exceed two. So what's the difference between the last one and this one? It says do not exceed. One was sixty thousand. We've always done uh, not to exceed on these types of things. It's just the terminology of the contract that we've done the last twelve but, years. But, you're exceed, but you are exceeding the sixty thousand. Correct. Not exceeding the 60 until we get to the next building. We'll to, yes, that, that's <laughs> my concern. Um, so, yes, I understand contracts. Um, any other questions on council? Um, when you did the uh, fiber optic, was there any charges from DPNL to do any engineering as far as adding wire to the poles or anything? Uh, they did a pole analysis of the power lines, to, uh, the power poles to make sure that the additional bracketing of the line to the poles uh, wouldn't create. Uh, a force on the pole that the force the pole wasn't designed to do. Was there charges? Yes. Yeah, DPNL does that on every pole on attachment. Every pole. They need to make sure yeah. the class of the poles is, will substantiate the additional weight. And is that and part of your doing it. charges? No, that's or? something DPNL does. It's their facility and they run the analysis mm -hmm. and determine if a brace is needed or if a pole is you can explain it better than I can. Yeah. Uh, if a if a brace is needed or if a if a pole is sub, uh, doesn't meet the standards for, uh, for I, I understand adding, that, but I'm just curious who pays that. If adding the equipment to it, it creates that, that, that was to right. replace the pole, then we have to pay for that as well. So the city paid for that. Yeah. Correct. Okay. It was part of the original Brackney. when we were uh, Brackney's. It was it was part of Brackney's contract and it was in the. It was in their contract. It was mm -hmm. in their contract. Okay. Yes. Any That's other fine. discussion on council? <clears throat> Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so with that, may I have a, a motion to uh, adopt resolution 2018-DD? Um, I'd like to make a motion to adopt resolution number 2018-DD. May I have a second? Second. And roll call. Motion by Mr. Greenwood to adopt resolution 2018-DD, a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into an amended service agreement with IBI Group for Engineering Services on the Upper Hillside Water Main Improvement Project, seconded by Mr. Schweller. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schweller? Yes. Mr. Edwards? Yes. Mrs. Middlestetter? Yes. Mrs. Sigur Lawson? Yes. Mayor Baird? Yes. Um, and moving on, uh, back to Mayor's announcements. I believe we have Amber Smith here from, and if I'm going to pr pronounce this right, um, Neck of Dayton Foster Care? Necco. 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 Okay, thank you very much. Apologize for the delay, I mean no disrespect. But um, so we're here uh, to talk about how we want to spread awareness. Our, our main goal is to try to find uh, foster parents. And so we are trying to partner up with um, people who have interest in wanting to help us spread that word. So any um, events that your city may have, that we could get involved with would definitely be something we'd be interested in. Um, and that's really all, all I have. Um, do you want my business card? Um, yes, we can We can take that. And okay. then we can, um, another good place would probably be the Chamber of Commerce. If you contact Chris Ewing at Robert Shirk Creek Chamber, they that may would be, be able to. Perfect. Thank you. You said Chamber of Commerce? Yes. Um, and I, I assume you probably have worked with Greene County, Children's Services, and those other, yes. and Montgomery County yes. as well. Yes. Um, but yes, that would be the other probably local avenue would be Chamber of Commerce, us, okay. and then also the township, Sure Creek Township. That's wonderful. Thank you very okay. much. Well, thank you very much thank for coming you. out. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Resolution 2018-EE. Mrs. Siegel Lawson. Uh, resolution number 2018-EE, a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into a lease agreement with the Greene County Public Library for the property located at 57 West Franklin Street. Whereas the city of Bellbrook is the owner of the property located at 57 West Franklin Street, parcel ID L35-0001-0002, 
0086-00, known as the Winner's Library. <coughs> and whereas this property and the building housed on it has, has been a library since 1906, in which the building was purchased with the stipulation that it will only be used as a library. And whereas the city of Bellbrook recognizes the value of having a library located in a city that is open to all commu community members and visitors alike. And whereas it is recognized that a formal lease agreement should be in place in which both owner and tenant have formalized responsibilities for the property in order pres to preserve and protect it for years to come. Now, therefore, the city of Bellbrook here, hereby resolves section one that the city manager is hereby directed and authorized to execute the lease agreement attached here to with the Green County Public Library for the property known as the Winner's Library. Section two, that the lease shall become effective upon signing and shall remain in effect until December 31st, 2023 and renewing automatically for succeeding one year periods. Section three, that this resolution shall take effect and be enforced forthwith. Anyone talk about the proposed agreement this is actually a lease agreement that is very similar to ones that the Green County Library has in place with other municipalities in which they own the buildings I believe that the only <coughs> Green County Library building that is actually owned by the libraries I believe is Xenia um, all of the other community libraries within the county are owned by the municipalities in which they they reside so I had heard that there, you know, this was on the list of things to do left by the previous city manager and, you know, in having conversations, some people have said that they thought that there was a lease at one point, but, you know, it was not anything that was still valid. So I, um, I had a lease that was used by um, a couple of the other um, libraries and between the library and that particular municipality. And so this has already went through. Um, Green County and their board has already approved this lease so basically it spells out everything that we've already been doing it just formalizes things so um, they're they're responsible for maintenance um, we we take care of the outside uh, plowing and mowing and things like that um, it, it states what kind of uh, insurance they should have for liabilities and for property insurance um, you know who just who is responsible for all things related to the library um, which is spelled out um, most of it's just form language that's that's pretty standard in contracts with with leases such as this um, so this has went through Green County Public Library's board and now it's before council and um, let's see there was one other thing that I was thinking about yeah so this is a this is a five-year lease, five years in a few months, um, so running out at the end of 2023 20, and then for one-year periods. And it also should be noted that I did run this by um, Maverma, which is our Miami Valley Risk Management Association, our insurance pool. Um, they're, they're more than willing to look over any contracts that we enter in. So ever since I've started any contract that we've entered in, I've had them review it. And they had some uh, suggestions in terms of the liability insurance, so I tweaked that. And I also had Patricia Campbell, our uh, solicitor, or law director, take a look at it, and she was okay with it as well. So it's passed through a number of different tests, and now it's just uh, it's up for council's approval, and then I can enter into the agreement with the county library. I, I guess I just had one question, and mm -hmm. I know that we said that we would be responsible for like snow removal from the parking lot sidewalks, but what about like the parking lot? Like, what if it needs to be repaved? or restriped I mean is that us or is that them that was kind of the only thing that I read through the whole thing uh, that was the only thing that I was not sure it's a good question I don't know for sure but I'm pretty sure we're on the hook for it yeah. since it's our asset it's, but yeah um, it's our parking lot didn't yes, we replace the AC our parking too? Lot. Huh? We replaced the heating. We did. But did they pay but some of that cost too? I did. I yeah, yeah, they probably negotiated. Yeah. Well, this specifically says in the future they're on the hook for it. Yeah. Because so they're on the, the hook for it. They are. They are. They're, we're responsible for everything outside. outside they're responsible inside. for everything inside. Yeah. Listen, what I'd like to see us do, and we talked about this before, is someplace we've got to put some decent signage that says this building is owned and operated or owned by the city of Bellbrook. Okay. I'd like that to be very prominent and not subtle. I want people to know that we're paying for that yes. building. And I don't think we have anything there that says it right now. If it's a sign outside or sign inside or on the sign or something. Sponsored but by the city. 
<laughs> owned by. Yeah. I'm not yeah. sponsored by owned by. I want yeah. people to know that. I don't think they realize that we own that building yeah. and that we paid the expense on it. I don't think most people realize that the county library system does not own the majority of the libraries. No. No, I would agree, but I want to make sure our citizens know. Okay. I think a lot of them use that building. I want to make sure they know that's where some of their tax dollars are going because I think there's a disconnect between what we spend our money on and what mm -hmm. they enjoy, and I want them to know. And I think not just a real small sign. I mean, something halfway decent as far as signage goes. Okay. So when you walk in, you'll see it, and you know. And Can the library know? board may not like that, but I think that's how we go on it. Yeah, I would I can't imagine they wouldn't. I know we've had those discussions that mm -hmm. we're on the hook and the library serves more than just the citizens of Belbrook, mm -hmm. too. Yeah, yeah, so, I get all. But I just want everybody to know who, who owns what and just kind of. But that library gets a lot of visitors and a lot of use, including my wife. So yes. uh, it is a good asset to actually have in the mm -hmm. city. So. It is. I'm sorry, I still have a, some, I'm still confused on the HVAC. It says landlord shall at a its expense maintain the exterior of the premises and all common areas the structure of major building systems including the HVAC and say anything so we are on the oh we are we on are the for the okay. yes for the I mean, I'm not saying I have an issue with structure that, major systems including HVAC that's so usual, that's usual for the landlord. Oh, I know. It's yeah, usual, we have to keep it up, got the building operational. Right. Yeah. Anything yeah. cosmetic or anything like that would be. We did get some help with that on the last time. Yeah, because, because there was no lease. Yeah, so now we wouldn't be able <laughs> now, to. Now there's a lease. Um, because you know what we're assuming not they're not paying anything. Mm -mm. No. So, um, hence the uh, other than their well, liability. I understand or, the library is a service to our citizens yeah. and everyone uses it. I just mm -hmm. wanted to. Well, at least we know we've upgraded it. Yeah, somewhat. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, but that's a good like, catch. All the libraries are like this. They have no pay, and they make mm -hmm. the city mm -hmm. and municipality maintain the infrastructure mm -hmm. of the building. Basically, you provide them with the structure, and they provide the service to the community they as provide the trade the books off. And the and they pay the utilities and, and the expenses. expenses. And the mm -hmm. properties, I believe, is deeded that way, correct? So, mm -hmm. that's the only thing it'll ever be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do well, we it was donated, right, by the Winters family? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do we know, though, if it needs a new roof or windows or anything? I mean, is that built into our budget? Are we planning for any of that stuff? That is not something that I am aware of at this point. Mark would budget for that in the past, so it's just when it comes budget time to say, hey, is this something we need to do? Should yeah. we do it? Do we have the funds to do it this year? Is there a five-year capital plan for that building? Those kinds of things. There was nothing... I mean, I've been pretty involved with budget process already, and I haven't, I haven't seen anything in the five-year plan related to the library at this point. So I would assume that that means that all systems are pretty much up to par. At Probably this point. worth checking just to make sure. So any surprises on it? Yeah. Yeah, part of the budget process. Okay. Any other questions regarding the library? If not, seeing none, I have a motion to adopt resolution 2018-EE. I move that we adopt resolution number 2018-EE. May I have a second? A second. And roll call. Motion by Mrs. Seeger Lawson to adopt resolution 2018-EE, a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into a lease agreement with the Greene County Public Library for the property located at 57 West Franklin Street, seconded by Mrs. Middlestetter. Mrs. Sigur Lawson? Yes. Mrs. Middlestetter? Yes. Mr. Edwards? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schweller? Yes. Mayor Baird? Yes. Moving on, city manager's report. Okay, I provided an update to council, and I'm not gonna go through all of this because it's massive, um, but just to let everybody know some of the things that I, I have been up to. Um, we did have 12 applicants for the service director position. Um, there were interviews held, and um, there was an interview panel that consisted, an initial interview panel that consisted of um, some of the members of the service department, um, the assistant to the manager, and the police chief. And uh, it was it was pretty much unanimously decided that our own internal candidate, Ryan Pasley, rose above all of the other candidates, and he was offered the position this afternoon. So I'm, I'm really excited to have Ryan. I've had the opportunity to work with him since I started, well, actually since Dale retired, and he's a very capable individual. He's, he's got a wealth of experience with the city. He's been here, I believe it's 19 years now, and 
he's really worked his way up and he was foreman uh was his most recent position before the promotion and I have full faith in, in Ryan and his abilities and, and working with him has been a real pleasure the last couple months since Dale has left. So, um, and his crew has full support of him and um, it, I think that the process was really good. Everybody was um, really happy with the outcome. Um, there, were, there were a few candidates that were, that were really good, but um, Ryan really rose above everybody. So um, I'm glad to have that, uh, that process completed. Um, <coughs> Council received an email from me about the comprehensive plan update. Planning board is going to have a few meetings coming up. There's going to be a visioning meeting October 11th. Um, there's a meeting at the beginning of November, um, which I'll announce that date. Um, once we get a little bit closer, where it's going to be a community meeting. And uh, then it will come back before planning board again to finalize the comprehensive plan to come to council for the first meeting in December so that we can get uh, that <coughs> formalized and really start moving forward with uh, some of the recommendations that they'll make. And we can really start to get some traction um, once that plan's completes really where the opportunity comes in to really start taking some action steps. So I'm excited for that. Um, budget process. Uh, so this is tricky. Um, just because of the way that the dates are falling, um, typically budget starts the second meeting in October. Um, as it kind of relates to all of this uh, comprehensive plan stuff, I'm going to go to a conference in Cleveland that's held by uh, Heritage Ohio, and it's a nonprofit organization that focuses on uh, historic preservation and downtown revitalization. And so the second meeting in October, I'm going to actually be in Cleveland, so I won't be able to participate in that council meeting. So I wanted to see if there would be a possibility of meeting um, on a different date so that we don't cancel that meeting. I was thinking maybe we try the 29th, which there would be a fifth Monday in October. So instead of the fourth Monday, meet the fifth um, and start budget process at that point if, if council is okay with that. Okay, so that would be the 29th yeah, of October. I'm, I'm checking. Okay. And then there's a second one that we're going to have to look at too That's because okay. Veterans Day is going to fall on a Monday and um, it's going to fall on a council Monday. So, again, that's right during budget season. So, um, the options that we would have in place of the 12th is we could try to meet the 13th the day after. Um, or maybe we meet the 19th and then we do two back-to-back -back Mondays. Is so, there a problem meeting on Veterans Day or just... I mean, we could. Is that a holiday for you guys? It yeah. is a holiday for us, mm -hmm. but I mean... Oh, yeah, then we don't want to do that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so two options on the table. We could either do Tuesday the 20th or we could do um, two back-to-back -back, or we could do the 26th. Can, I'm sorry, can we go back to October? So we're going to have a meeting on the 8th, and then instead of the 22nd, oh, it'll be shoot. the 29th? I'm sorry, I said the wrong date for November. Um, yeah, the, the 22nd, 12th. yes, you're right, the 12th. Okay, so the first one, the 22nd, is um, when the regular council meeting should occur, and I was proposing Monday the 29th okay. as an alternative. Okay. I'm good with that. I'm good I'm with, that. with that. That's good. And then the first council meeting that would occur in November is on Veterans Day. So we could either do it the day after, which would be a Tuesday meeting on the 13th, or we could move it to the next week, which would be the 19th, but that would mean that we would do two council meetings in a row, the 19th and then the 26th. When's Thanksgiving? It's the 23rd, uh, 2nd. I can't do it on the 19th. Yeah. I can do it on the 13th. I can do it on the 13th. I can do it on the 13th. What does that do to our live broadcast? Anything? <coughs> Uh, Louis shaking his head, nothing. So no. Okay. I was unsure of that myself. We'll yeah. still be on TV. Yeah. I don't think there's anything. It just has to make sure we schedule the service department or the fire department. Make sure they get it scheduled. Okay. 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 Because they do the fire department. Work the fire department. I thought maybe somebody else had that so time it, slot. So right now that would be. No, we're the only ones. So the 13th and the 26th. Yes, 13th and the 26th for November. Okay. Correct. All right. All right. And then that doesn't back us up with any of our budget meetings. Um, so we're going to do a second farmer's market on Saturday, October 6th. It's going to be expanded an hour, so 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, so I'm really excited about that. The first one was 
wonderful. We had great weather, great turnout. It turned out to be really good, so I'm excited about that. Um, other than that, those are the pretty major things. Oh, one other small thing. Um, our cable channel, um, I'd met with Greg in the fire department, and we've had their issues, you know, with music rights and things like that. So if you look at our, or if you listen to our cable channel, it was the same two songs that would loop <laughs> over and over and over and over. So we, um, we contracted with what used to be known as Muzak, which is now Mood Music, and now we will have a variety of different things in which we can change out for holidays and things like that. And based on the time of day, you can, you know, slow it down a little bit and make it a little more relaxing or pep it up a little bit. So big change is coming to the music on the cable channel. So that's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it for me. Any questions for our city manager? Yeah, I, uh, because I'm probably the only person that has kids on the council. Um, uh, Beggar's Night. I think we, a couple years ago, we decided we were always going to have it on the 31st. So Correct. Mm -hmm. Along, yes. with yes. Along with everyone else. Yes. That's yep. that's what all the city managers have kind of moved to, to keep everybody in their own communities and from kind of spreading out on okay. those off days. Correct. Well, so on the service director position, just out of curiosity, who are the applicants? All from outside or other than Ryan, any <coughs> internal applicants? Um, no, he was the only internal. We had... Um, we had somebody come from as far away as northern Ohio uh, that drove wow. three hours, um, and wow. then there were a couple of people from the Greene County area, but, I mean, they were kind of peppered all over. Mm. But all from other municipalities, so to speak, kind of? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And good job on the farmer's market. We came down. It was yes. a good crowd. It seems like some nice merchandise there. I got some of the... Uh, Bloody Murray hot sauce, it's actually pretty tasty stuff. So. <laughs> They'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. They did good with it, so congratulations. Yes. It's successful. Yeah. Thanks. It was very nice. Any other questions for city manager? Um, <clears throat> how are you going to handle the water form position? Are you going to announce that? Or are you gonna um, that's, you know, we're going to take it one step at a time. So uh -huh. <laughs> we, we really, I know that, I know that the guys are going to be chomping at the bit to figure out what we're going to do, but we're not in any kind of a, a rush right now because it's kind of on their downward swing in between summer and you know winter and the snow season so we want to make sure again that we make the right decision and take our time with it and make the make the right choice without you know hurrying up and doing it so I'm, I'm hoping within the next few weeks we'll have a good plan together for that are you gonna <coughs> go external on that we need to decide that okay I, since Ryan just got offered the position today, I want to give him a little bit of time to breathe before we start talking about it. But, you know, I think it's it's already been, you know, something that I, I know myself I've been thinking about. So we'll see. We'll see where it takes us. We need to, I need to really take a look at who we have inside and figure out who would even be qualified and take a look at the job description, see if anything needs changed, things like that first. So any other questions? Seeing none, we're moving on to committee report service. Um, no service report. Safety. Uh, no report, Mayor. <clears throat> Finance and audit. Nothing to report to see the Mayor. Community affairs. Nothing. All right. Uh, old business. Anyone have any old business? New business. We need to talk about information technology just to make sure we get this straight for our budgeting purposes. Um, I know we're a little bit aware of some of these prices. I think the gist is two options. It boils down to... Um, Upgrading our system, making sure it's secure, and deciding when we want to move forward with certain upgrades. Some we know that we have to do, others we could wait, and it really is going to boil down to cloud-based option versus not. We see the proposed dollars for this year of 67860 correct? Mm -hmm, correct. And then uh, replace equipment next year is 170 the, and the big difference we'll need to decide on the cloud base yes or no at 66,200 is that a appropriate synopsis correct so this year the network infrastructure um, piece is kind of the big it, kind of the big thing and as everybody knows um, we we have changed service providers in terms of our information technology they did a full assessment of our system and made some pretty good recommendations in, in order to move us forward in the best way possible so um, it's gonna it's gonna require um, some you know substantial funding in order to get us at, at, at a at a spot that's gonna be you know really solid moving forward. Um, annual workstation replacement that's just gonna be something that we're gonna have to see every year. Right now we need 29 as of today, so that's not a good number moving forward. That should be on a cycle where you know it's more like 
12 every year versus 29 one year and nothing for four years so um, that's something that council will see every year but um, as the mayor said uh, the the two biggest uh, pieces for 2019 which need to be addressed are our servers and our telephone system whether or not we want to replace all of our current equipment with um, with uh, comparable hardware or if we want to go cloud-based solutions um, the cloud-based solutions are cheaper out um, on the onset but there are some continual costs for the services provided um, by the by the companies that that maintain those systems so um, my personal preference is to go cloud-based um, that just makes us more reliant on our internet so we would probably have to get a backup internet system um, in place in case our our main provider uh, fails for whatever reason so we would have a redundancy there However, um, our internet service right now is costing us triple what it should, so I'm in the process of trying to find a better solution for that. So with that being said, at the end of the day, even with the redundancy, we should be saving quite a bit of money versus what we're paying for one provider now. So uh -huh. that's kind of where we're at. This um, 67000 that's not, not any of that is in our budget, though, right? So that all of that is brand new mm -hmm. spend yeah. for this year. That's um, yes, that's correct. I, I had to look because that number is very similar if you go cloud-based for 2019 so I had to look back at that but yes none of that was we had not prepared for this we had nothing in the budget for, for the uh, computer stuff at all or the uh, IT. Um, I know we had some stuff for the uh, software upgrades and some of those things. five thousand dollars a year in everybody's budget was what we had so um, it's not enough to cover the amount of equipment that we need it it would cover a few workstations here and there but unfortunately they weren't that those budgets don't appear that they had been used regularly otherwise we wouldn't have 29 that need to be replaced at once so um yeah i can't really speak to what's happened i'm guessing at this late in the year there's no room to not spend someplace else to make up for some of that i mean I can definitely take a look at that since we're, you know, creeping up on I mean, we're in October and on the end of the year, but there will have to be a supplemental appropriation to be able to cover this stuff. Um, well, do your best to see if we can keep that supplemental appropriation to And I think, you know, some of this, keep in mind, is clearly going to be water, especially with some of the linkages we have right. to have that are the cause of the water, mm -hmm. so those, some of those. 60% water beer 65, or something. 65, yeah. 35. So keep in mind the impact on which funds they're coming out of. Mm -hmm. Well, we need to be as fiscally responsible as possible, but we all know our budgets and, right. and which budgets are more depleted or running in the negative than and others. I'm understanding that the workstations are supposed to be replaced every four years. Four to five years. So you have workstations, and you also have, depending upon what versions of software you're running on those, especially operating systems, that um, pretty soon some of those will no longer be supported, which essentially means that yeah. the upgrade is necessary to keep out any uh, potential hacking threats or viruses or all that kind of fun stuff will not be supported, and they won't get those updates to be able to fight those which is our current situation most of ours i think are running off of windows 7 it's going to be unsupported it will not be supported I know. so which makes and me which very not unhappy. supported means is if you're on computer you'll see it'll tell you all the time oh we need to yeah. install new software what that software part of what that software is doing is telling the computer okay we have this this new potential virus that is coming in and the, yeah. and one of many things but that's it's one 20, of the 2020 when you seven is goes away it's close. Yeah. 2007, sure. 11, 11 years ago. So you, uh, no, I mean, tw it's 2020 is when um, that quits being supported. That quits yeah. being supported. I believe so. Well, I don't know. I, I have think, no idea. I think it's 2020. Yeah. It's it's soon. System, system 7. Mm -hmm. It's just old. So you need a decision from us about cloud-based or non-cloud-based? Right? I just need to know what what council would like to do so that I can start to incorporate it in the budget so we don't we don't need a motion we need to mm -hmm. give her guidance because the formal approval will be when we do the budget correct yeah so, windows 7 2020 is what he gave us on his yeah, last yeah. Time. so the question is the really the big question is cloud-based or not cloud-based my opinion on it would probably be 
cloud-based because of potential of capital cost mm -hmm. in future to maintain yeah. your own well, you're going to have to keep refining new hardware. You're going to have to pay annual fees, but you're not going to have to buy the hardware. Yeah. Every the several cloud, years. Keep up with all the latest stuff. That's what I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I think we go to cloud clearly. Everyone else? Is yeah. that the guidance we... Okay, you got it. Okay, got sounds it. good. Thank you. Okay, anything else on that? No. Okay, open discussion. I don't have anything tonight, Mayor. Uh, nothing, Mayor. Nothing. Uh, football, still on my mind. Um, <laughs> uh, congratulations to the Bellberg varsity football team who beat um, Franklin, which is the first time we beat Franklin in several years. I want to say six, but I'm not quite sure of that number. Um, so that was a big deal. So the, the, the um, football team is undefeated. So we're 5-0 and oh, and awesome. five more games left. So. Yeah, that's great. Yep. Congratulations. Deal. That's what I was going to say too. Mike? Nothing for the season of And I have nothing. Anyone in our audience have anything? <laughs> DPNL still doing okay? All right. <laughs> um, does any member on Castle have any other business to come before this meeting of City Council? Seeing none, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>